Welcome, welcome to the Adding Immigration Evaluations to your practice. My name is Juan Santos, and I love that you're here. I love that you are taking time out of your day, and you're interested in this niche, interested in you know learning how to write powerful, amazing immigration evaluations in your practice. And I wanna teach that to you. I wanna teach it to you in four steps, because five steps, six steps, too many steps can be exhausting, and I know you're busy. I know you've got so many things to do on your to-do list. You are an active clinician out there, doing amazing things in the world, so let's just keep it simple and direct. With immigration evaluations, one of the things that you're gonna receive is a $2,000 increase in revenue. And, and that's partly due to the higher fee that comes with this service versus your typical counseling or psychotherapy sessions. Who is the program for, right? So we need to get that right away, that conversation needs, needs to take place. It's for licensed mental health professionals, you know, all the way from a licensed social worker, a LPC, psychologist, et cetera. People that want to increase your practice revenue. You want to add the niche to your practice. You want to be an advocate and support others, right? And I know you do because you are a healer, you are a helper. And I think one of the beautiful things about this program, I'm going to teach you today these four steps, is that if you have a group practice, you can just allow you know, that chain of events to continue where you teach it to your other employees, and then they're able to provide the service to the practice, hence increasing your revenue just a little bit more. One of the questions that I get over and over and over is, you know, the one of, can I write the evaluation? And I'm going to share with you, yes, yes, you can write uh, the immigration evaluations. Here's what you need to do, though, this checklist. Be licensed. Be licensed in your state to practice that or in the state that you want to practice. Have liability. Cover your ASS. You need to cover that. And then education and training. And you're sitting here today, which, you know, that covers some education there. More than likely, in your master's degree program, you hit on courses like assessment courses, multicultural courses, ethics, professionalism. Those are going to play a key role in giving you the skills and knowledge to be able to write effective and powerful immigration evaluations. I want to share a little bit about me because I know that you're here, and again, you're taking time out of your day, and I love that. I love that you know, you're giving me the opportunity to share space with you. My name is Juan, Juan Santos. I live here right now in Greensboro, North Carolina, and this is my wife, Elizabeth, our kids, uh, Nola and Alex, and <laughs> even looking at them in those these pictures are wild, um, but they're giving you the best smiles. If you're a parent out there, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Those kids can be wild behind the scenes, but then you know, they're in picture day, they do a good job, don't they? I love taking adventures. I love being silly, and I love that you are willing to be here with me today to take this adventure. I am from the Dominican Republic, born there to about the age of six, seven, then I came here to the US. My dad came here first, and then my, my siblings, my mom and I. And it, it's really provided so many opportunities that you know now when I get to serve individuals who need support from immigration uh, clinicians such as myself or you, yes, you, um, it, it lights me up. It, it lights my life up because I know how much it has really, how many doors it's opened up in my life. And I'm so grateful for that. And I think as clinicians, we are also advocates too. As I mentioned before, I'm in North Carolina. You know, I love living here. We've got the mountains, the beach, although sometimes it can be too hot or too cold, but that's not why you're here. You're not here to listen to me about the weather. <laughs> um, my wife and I, we operate a group counseling practice in Greensboro. It's called Santos Counseling. And we do that together as husband and wife and our kids come in on the weekends and they do a good job uh, cleaning up, making sure the place looks nice and uh, presentable. I'm also a consultant where I help clinicians like you be able to go from launching a private practice or sharpening certain things up in your counseling practice so that you're more effective. Also create courses, courses that help you niche into um, the, the, the specialty of writing immigration evaluations. In my years of practice, I have done hundreds of these immigration evaluations as well as supported so many clinicians. And I'll share a few stories with you a little bit later as far as you know, feeling confident and effective in writing uh, immigration evaluations. So the four-step program, I know you're out there and you're ready. You're like, Juan, tell me these four steps now. So the four-step program, the first one is understanding the immigration evaluation. You know, we need to know what, the, what, what is this thing? Like, what are you talking about, right? Number two, types of cases. And I'm going to share with you the types of cases so you know what you're getting into. And then the part that I like the most, writing the evaluation. Um, and then another part that I really like is marketing, being able to market and brand your practice. Cause you know, we can set up shop and say, Hey, I'm over here and I have an amazing, uh, counseling practice or clinical practice, but we need to figure out a way to market the community and let them know that you are also effective at what you do. So before we dive in, um, you'll probably like this as a clinician out there. Let's kind of make a mental shift. 
I want, I want us to, you know, increase that mindset to allow these steps to be a shift in our mentality that's going to transform the way that, you know, you view writing immigration evaluations. Something I'm going to share with you right now is you can do this, my friends. You can write these evaluations and you could probably be really, really good at them. It's just building that confidence and knowing, you know, really what they're all about. And I'm going to, I'm going to share space with you. And we're going to get into that. So shift number one, understanding the immigration evaluation. So what are immigration evaluations? They're lengthy, they're neutral, they have to be conducted by a licensed mental health professional, um, and, and they serve to aid the applicant, who's, who is your client. So equal sign there, they're your client. And, I, and I'll give you an example. With these immigration evaluations, your client, they're gonna be applying for some sort of immigration visa, right? Some sort of immigration process. And they're gonna be being supported by the attorney on one end, so that's one of their support persons. And the attorney's gonna do all the legal side. We, do, we are not attorneys, we don't have to mess with any of that. We are going to be doing the clinical side because we are clinicians and we study our mental health and we are darn good at it, aren't we? It's good to be confident. I want you to be confident when you're in this, um, in, in, in this space with me. So with this process, right, um, the individual, the applicant, they're going from a change of status, legal status. And, and the legal status mean that they're going to go from undocumented typically to a documented status. And just as a little bit of uh, guidance and information, I want to share a little education on what undocumented really means. It means that you enter the U.S. without permission. So let's say that I'm, from, I, and I am from the Dominican Republic, but I came here without permission. That would, you know, put that uh, um, the definition of undocumented. Or I came here with a work visa, but then it expired, but then I stayed. Right. So again, undocumented. Or I applied for some sort of visa, got denied, but still stayed. Again, undocumented. And the typical client that you're going to work with who's gonna come in with a certain case, and we'll get into the cases, they're gonna be um, with this status undocumented. I wanna share a big number with you. The US Department of Homeland Security has 11.4 million all unauthorized immigrants residing in the US, mostly in California, Texas, Florida. And if you're not in one of those states, it doesn't mean that you know, those, those numbers aren't there either. I'm in North Carolina, and my practice continues to grow. And when I first started, with writing immigration evaluations, it was maybe like 10% and then it got 20, 30. Now it's almost 80% immigration evaluations. And that came in part from marketing, from letting the community know that I am here to serve, I am here to help. Sorry, I've got something in my eye, I'm not sure what that is. Um, so with that big number, the reason I share it is to give you that peace of mind, you know, of knowing that you're going to be able to serve those in your community. You're going to be able to help those in your community because there's such a large number of individuals that are going to require that service. So what's expected from you, right? That's a big question. You know, Juan, I'm here and I'm listening to you in this, event, in this um, webinar, but what's the expectation? Neutral, unbiased evaluation. So when you're writing it, you're not writing it from a subjective view. You're not being biased. You are being unbiased and you're being neutral. You're going to have to work with the attorney. And I don't want to scare you off there. What, the example I love to give is psychiatrists, right? Imagine you have a client who you're working with that has anxiety and they're taking medication. It'll be good practice to reach out to the psychiatrist and say, hey, you know, I'm working with a client now. We're using CBT. Um, you know, what's going on on your end and what's going on on my end? So you're able to break bread, get to know each other and best serve the client. Literally the same thing takes place from the legal side as far as these immigration evaluations. You're going to educate the client during the process of the evaluation. And what I'm speaking about there is educating them on what an evaluation is versus what a counseling session is. How long does an evaluation take? Um, what does a typical session look like? Are there telehealth sessions? Are there face-to-face -face sessions? Being able to share all of those logistics with them. And overall, they're very synonymous. They're very similar, um, both of those type of cases. The cases meaning an evaluation versus psychotherapy. The main difference that I'll share with you is that we don't want to engage in mixing them up. We don't want to go from doing an evaluation to doing a counseling session because then that is considered a, a, a shift or a dual relationship, if you will, where you're providing two services and according to the ACA, unethical. Type of cases. So type of cases, let's take a deep breath before we go into it, right? So type of cases, there's many cases, but I'll share with you a secret to these cases. There's trauma ones and there are hardship ones. That is the differentiation. If you're able to acknowledge how to do the trauma ones, then you're gonna be able to knock out a lot of the other common cases after the trauma. And if you're able to know how to do the hardship ones, then you're gonna be able to knock out a lot of the ones that have to do with hardship. And I am gonna ride with you to teach you how to do that. So here's the common ones, asylum, a VAWA, U visa, T visa, cancellation or removal, hardship waivers, 
and these are again some of the common ones. I don't want you to get you, I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I'm going to go over a few of these so you're able to acknowledge how to how to engage in them and maybe how to provide it uh, within your practice because you don't need to know every single one. You know where I'm at in North Carolina, the majority of cases that I do are hardship cases and U visa cases in VAWA. Um, you know, every so often a different will slide in, but that's not typical. I've got um, colleagues that are like in New York or Texas, and they're just a little bit different where they may be doing more asylum cases. So it really just depends on where you're at and the type of training that you need. So an extreme hardship case, I know that you're reading as I'm kind of giving you this presentation, and I like to share examples um, or narratives so that it makes sense. So myself, I'm from the Dominican Republic, and, my, and, and I was born there. Now let's say that I came to the U.S. undocumented, right? That means I am undocumented in the U.S., which is um, unlawful, correct? And my wife, born here in the U.S., and she has her paper, she has her legal status, she is a U.S. citizen. Well, for me to apply, or for us, my wife and I, to apply for this process, she would go and work with an attorney. And then the attorney is going to try to prove that she would go through some sort of hardship, emotional, psychological hardship. That's from the counseling end. There's other types of hardship, like financial hardship, um, but from the counseling end, we're looking at that emotional type of hardship. So then she would go work with a counselor like myself or with you because she is the client, not me. I'm undocumented. She is the client because she is petitioning for me. She is trying to show the counselor who's going to work with her, right, the evaluation, the type of hardship that she's going to go through, you know, such as I've got two kids at home. How does that make you feel? What type of support system do you have? Who is the primary breadwinner, right? All of those facets topics that you can engage in during the um, evaluation allow you to put content into the evaluation and then give it strength so then at the end you could write a recommendation so that is what a extreme hardship case uh, or waivers are the next one is a VAWA now this VAWA goes into trauma um, a VAWA stands for violence against uh, women's act but also includes male victims and what it does is it allows a battered individual to file and adjust their status to the lawful permanent resident. And that's what, that's what I was speaking about earlier when I mentioned, you know, the purpose of a lot of these cases that you're going to work, uh, work with is that they allow the individual to adjust their status from undocumented to some sort of uh, lawful, uh, legal, or documented status. And one of the things that we're going to do with the VAWA is we're going to be working with that individual, the battered individual who was subjected to the negative treatment, right? So let's say domestic violence and let's say that he went through domestic violence. Um, things that, you know, I would hear in cases would be that the spouse would tell the other one, you know, if you go to the police, I'll, re I'll report you to the, to the if, or if you go to the police and tell them that I'm, you know, abusing you, I'm going to deport you. I'm going to tell the police that you're not legal and then they're going to deport you and you never see your kids again. Right. So something like so heartbreaking and so difficult to just swallow that these battered individuals, they just they, I mean, they don't, they don't say anything. And for years, they, they succumb to that kind of treatment. So you're going to work with them and engage in that trauma focused um, clinical setting, if you will, where you're writing the evaluation and getting to know their story, getting to know their upbringing. Maybe you'll hear certain um, chains of events that connect to manipulation or coercion, such as, you know, at first when we started dating, I had a job. And then after a while, he didn't want me to have a job. And the next thing I knew, um, I, I, all my support system was gone because we moved from one state to another state, right? So those are the topics you're gonna to be including. And then the next one is also trauma, and it's a U visa. So a U visa one works very similar to the VAWA. You have to be, just a, you have to be a victim of a qualifying criminal activity, such as, um, let's say if I were in a, um, if, I, if I went to a bank, right? And at the bank, I'm having a good day there, but then the bank is a bank robbery. And this thing I know is a gun behind my head, and I'm just going through that episode, if you will. So one of the things that um, can take place is that if I qualify, right, so I have suffered substantial physical and emotional um, injuries, abuse due to the crime, uh, positive support with law enforcement, and being helpful with the investigation and, and prosecution. So one of the examples I like to give here, and I've used it over and over, um, it seems to really hit well with those that are listening in, is imagine that I went to that bank and I went through that experience where someone put a gun to my head, right? And I am undocumented, right? That's what allows me to apply for this U visa process. Now, what also allows me to apply for is that I cooperate law enforcement. The police get there to the bank scene and I want to let them know what took place, what happened, what type of injuries, all, all that good stuff. And then from there, I work with an attorney. You know, I say, hey, attorney, I want to apply for a U visa. And the attorney, of course, 
does all of that legal stuff. We as the clinicians do not do that legal stuff because we are not attorneys. Um, and we do the clinical stuff. So the attorney will then refer the individual to go see a clinician such as yourself or myself who's gonna evaluate them and just see the impact that took place. So if, if I were the counselor working with myself, you know, asking questions as far as what's your story, what took place? How did that day impact your emotions, your, your physical self, your family system, your work? You know, maybe I would say, you know what, I was really traumatized. And after that day, I did not go to work for a month. And that really made me feel depressed on top of some trauma symptoms. Like I can't sleep. Uh, I'm always anxious. I eat a lot when I get anxious. I'm really describing a lot of symptoms to you. And what you're doing as a clinician, when you're working with this case, is you're documenting all of that in a concise and effective manner. You're able to maybe connect it to a diagnosis, connect, maybe throw in some testing that allows symptoms to come out and then provide a recommendation at the end. So remember, there are so there are, there are many types of these immigration cases. Immigration cases fall under two categories, trauma and hardship. And you know, that's the key insight that I really want you to position yourself around. So shift number three, and this is one of my favorite, this, 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 this is my favorite area, writing the evaluation. So here comes the fun part. Before we dive in, I wanna share with you that you already have the foundation. And again, you do, you, you, you went to master's degree school, you have a graduate degree not master's degree school, that's silly, but you have a graduate degree. And in that degree, you went into the intake process. You went into using some, a few inventories, I assume, um, like a um, mental status exam, right? Uh, you went into multicultural courses. You went into assessment. Um, you went into ethics, professionalism, which gives you the foundation to be able to do a good job in this field. So four areas that make up the evaluation. Testing, observation, client information, and the attorney. What type of test are you going to give them that allows symptoms to come out? What are you going to observe? If there's a U visa and a crime took place and I'm that person that had the gun pulled behind their head and I'm sharing the story with you, what are you observing as I'm sharing information with you? Are you, sharing, uh, are you observing hand tremors, um, client information, you know, my name, date of birth, where am I from, where do I live, my support system? If it's a hardship case and my wife is applying for me because I'm going to be deported, right? Then you're looking at client information as far as, well, Where's he from in Dominican Republic? What type of town is it? Is there a support system there? Will she have to send money to him? Those type of details. And then the attorney. Attorney can come in as far as the client sharing information with them that maybe they didn't share with you, or if there is documentation on that side. So typically with a U visa, what happens is that, like I am, I mean, I am at the crime scene. The guy was pulled behind my head. The police come in. I share information with them and file a police report that gets turned into the attorney. In addition, the attorney may have the client write a personal statement of what happened, you know, recount of what happened. And then with the release of information, you're able to see that as well. So there's key components to including your evaluation. I wanna share these with you. And as you see them, they may connect to what's a CCA, uh, Comprehensive Clinical Assessment, which again, I shared with you, you've got the skills and knowledge to be able to do really well in this field. Um, the first one is their demographic information, and then we go into, um, you know, who are you, date of birth, where, where, where are you from, um, clinical background, that's, that's, that's your CV, your resume, if you will, where you're able to share with the person reading the evaluation why you have the skills and knowledge to be able to write the evaluation in the first place. And then a summary. A summary is just concise. What did you find out? Was there a diagnosis? What did the test say? Um, what's the recommendations? You know, just a quick one-page summary that highlights what the person reading the evaluation needs to understand from all of the pages. The reason for referral, why were they referred? You know, were they referred um, because of the trauma that took place? Um, were they referred from the attorney? The evaluation objectives, you know, what are we doing here? What is the purpose of this evaluation? It's maybe it's to find out symptoms to see how they were impacted by trauma. Client background, so looking at their education background, their work history, um, their life story, if you will, or their journey, you know, to the U.S., uh, through the migration process. Significant items, you know, they were looking at symptoms. What type of symptoms come out from, like, let's say, a vowel case where there's domestic violence in a relationship? Um, does a person fear uh, uh, other people? Do they walk with insecurity? Are they doubtful and insecure? Are they having issues sleeping? Those are your significant um, items or significant symptoms. Medical history, and it's probably exactly what you're thinking, medical psychiatric history, any past medication history, past history of working with a counselor, Testing, what type of testing are you gonna to use to back up your findings? It's one of the things that you want in this evaluation is validity. You wanna be able to back up your findings. So if you're working with a client and they're displaying um, anxiety symptoms and trauma symptoms connected to P 
PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, right? So there's your diagnosis. And I am that person that was, you know, getting um, the gun pulled behind my head. And maybe you'll give me like the PCL5 um, or some sort of inventory that's going to highlight more symptomology. And then from your end, you're able to document that. Observation, you know, again, what do you see? Uh, and then you have other areas of emotional impact. Other areas of emotional impact, that connects to just other factors that may be stressing the individual. So let's say that you work in a hardship case and my wife is your client and she's petitioning for me as her husband to be able to stay in the U.S. Maybe a different area could be that we have a child who has autism and the child has been receiving services here for an extended amount of time and really been doing a, well, a great job with services. Um, but without the support of, let's say, spouse, my support, then the child would lose those services. Or if we have to relocate to a different country, they would lose those services. And that can create an emotional impact. And that's just one example of so many. Recommendations. You know, recommendations as far as if you're working with a U visa case and you notice that the client is experiencing a heavy amount of um, post-traumatic stress, stress uh, symptomology, or anxiety symptoms, then you know recommendation may be explore medication, uh, explore medication management, schedule an appointment with an outpatient clinician, right? Um, so those are your recommendations, and then research. Research we're looking at what can back up my findings just a little bit more. So let's say that um, you're working with a VAWA case, and the client that you're working with um, for years did not disclose the information, right? Maybe you can document that through some sort of study. Maybe a research study highlights that um, subjects that go through um, domestic violence, often when being interviewed, do not disclose all of the information due to fear of what's going to happen when they get back home. You know, so it can get negative, if you will. Uh, or another example of research could be if you're working with a hardship case. You know, the example of my wife and I, where there's kids in the home, you can look at the impact, the psychological impact of separation as it impacts the children and then document that within the evaluation. So then we look at the role of the counselor and the role of the client, right? Which is so important, we need to know both roles. So the role of the client, working with the, the role of the client, the uh, counselor and the attorney. So your role as the counselor is to write the evaluation, write it neutral, remember, um, not subjective, write it professional, back up your findings. If you see anxiety symptoms, it doesn't hurt to utilize an inventory to also say that you see anxiety symptoms. Um, if you're working with a U visa case and then you document that the trauma took place and you feel really good about it, that you know it, it makes sense. Person went in, there was a bank robbery and now they're having distressful sleep, all the other symptoms of PTSD, it wouldn't hurt to also see the police report. So then you can say you know it, it connects to the collateral information from this police report that the incident in fact did take place based off of that report. And then working with your attorney, Again, it's, your, your attorney can be as helpful as you want them to be. And I like to imagine attorneys like psychiatrists, where if I'm working with a client with anxiety and the psychiatrist is prescribing them a medication, then I can call the psychiatrist or email them and say, hey, you know, this is Juan, I'm working with blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I, I kind of want to know, you know, the medication, what should I be looking for as far as uh, support? And then, you know, how, how do you think the CBT will integrate into that? And what we're doing is we're just having a conversation between professionals that's based off of supporting the client. And the attorney is the same way. If I'm working with a U visa case, I can call the attorney and say, you know, I want to be able to um, see the police report. Or did they share anything with you that you find really important that maybe I can follow up on? Overall, a collaborative team effort to support the client. So shift number four, marketing, right? You can build an amazing practice. You could be the best counselor out there um, when it comes to whatever niche you're doing or practice that you're providing, service that you're providing. But we need to find a way to let the community know that this is this is a warm place. This is a place where transformation takes place. Learning how to set up your practice for success. Marketing is about building relationships with people that can create change, right? So that's very important. You know, not just anyone. You know, I wouldn't go to let's say, uh, which at least I could, but a gas station and ask the clerk, um, you know, about referrals. Uh, but I, maybe I, maybe I, go, I would go to a medical office and speak to a physician, right? So that makes a little more sense because it's more appropriate to my setting. And then today what I want to do is today I want us to look at who are the common referring uh, persons. And the main one right away is an attorney. And the reason I'm going to give you that nugget is because I want you to walk away from this webinar today with not only knowledge on how to write an evaluation, not only knowledge of what immigration evaluations are, the type of cases, I want you to know how to get your first client and I want you to know how to serve them effectively. So your first clients can come and more than likely will come from an immigration attorney or the paralegal there. 
it's important to figure out what your, your elevator speech is. You know, what, what are you going to pitch out? Um, and then looking at an online versus face-to-face -face present. Do you want to send them an email? Do you want to do a quick video like this where you're walking them through the process of working with you? Or do you want to go face-to-face? -face? Um, I like to look at all of those options and explore which one's most effective. One tip that I'll give you as far as an elevator speech is, you know, if you consider that someone's struggling, let's say it's 11 o'clock at night, you know, not the typical person, right? They're, they're not going to be laying in bed going, wow, I, re I really need some CBT right now in my life. They're probably going to go, man, I can't sleep at all. I need someone to help me with these thoughts. That makes a little more sense. So then our elevator speech can connect to that. You know, I help anxious people that can't sleep, you know, versus I use CBT to help you move forward. We're looking at which one's a little more effective. So here's the steps that I want you to take. We're going to go over a few steps that allow you to get the client, but there's a process. And like most things in life, there's other steps or processes, systems that allow us to effectively um, get a result, to effectively reach some sort of transformation. So I want you to get on Google, and I want you to Google attorney, immigration attorneys in my area. And then from there, you're going to get a huge list. I want you to write down the potential attorneys and paralegals that you want to contact. I recommend the list so that you're able to keep track of everything. Keeping track of everything allows you to know who you can build a connection with versus who maybe is not um, seeking referrals at the moment. And then after that, we're going to look at three ways to contact them, snail mail, email, or a phone call. Now, with all of these ways, they really connect to you. You know, are you the type of person that feels comfortable going face to face? Or do you prefer doing a phone call? Or do you prefer just mailing things off? You know, all of those, you know, have to do with you. What I do encourage you to look at is having a welcome letter. And, and that welcome letter just orients them to who you are in your practice. You know, such as, hey, this is Juan over at Santos Counseling. Um, you know, my practice specializes in helping individuals with U visa cases and VAWA cases. Pretty black and white, straight to the point, let them know who you are and the service you provide. Then have some sort of price sheet. Let them know what the price is for the service. Um, and then I'll give you a little bit of information on that before we go to the next one. So the typical price for evaluation ranges between $500 all the way to $1,500. And usually what I encourage individuals is to start somewhere around their market area. So if you look at your area, Google counselors in your area that do immigration evaluation, see what they're charging, and then that's gonna be what the market is in, in that area. Um, from there, we do business cards. Some people don't like to use business cards. I like to use them because they're still effective. Um, they still give your information and allow the attorney to hand something to the client. And then the last thing is to include a step-by-step -step referral sheet. Not just, you know, you can refer to me, but how can I refer to you? So number one, you can do this, call this number. Number two, here's what's gonna happen when you call the number. Number three, here's what the first session looks like. It walks the person through and it allows them to visualize the process so that it puts them at ease. And then something else that I'd like to include is a video or PDF that goes over the immigration evaluation service. Um, and for that, you can contact me if you have any questions. Overall, what I typically do is I hop on a video like this and then I introduce myself and share how I can support the individual with a certain type of immigration case and then how they can contact me. It saves them time from reading and then maybe it helps them like if they're on the go and they just want to listen to the audio. Last tip, which is a core one, ask the attorney how you can be placed on the referral list. Typically all attorneys have a referral list, just like all medical providers have a referral list. And it's a very black and white question. You can call the attorney office off. Hey, how's it going? My name is Juan, I'm a counselor over here in Greensboro. I would love to know if I could be added to your referral list for um, immigration evaluations. So let's go into a review, right? Four shifts you need to succeed. Succeed in writing these immigration evaluations and adding them to your practice. Number one, understanding the immigration evaluation. Number two, the type of cases. The type of cases are gonna tell you the type of clients that you're gonna work with. And then writing the evaluation. And then number four, marketing your service. So now you have a choice. This is your life after all, right? I wanna be here for you though, if you allow me. I wanna take this journey alongside you. Are you ready to write expert level immigration evaluations? Something that I do is I help train mental health professionals who want to conduct immigration evaluations. And I do that by offering three different courses. So the courses are based off of where you're at in your journey. And here is some beautiful faces of individuals who have taken the courses, who have worked with me on a personal level. Um, and I want to share that with you because I do think social proof is so important. I think it's important for, you know, anyone out there to know that, um, you know, not only am I providing the service, but here's what people have to say about the service. 
because that speaks a lot. And, and I think you know that as a clinician where when you're working with the patients that you serve and then those patients share who you are to those in the community, it really speaks volume that you're doing a good job. So working on these three courses, the first one that I offer is if, if you just need help with writing, let's say you know how to brand and market your course, you know what the type of cases are, you just want to know how to write the evaluation. That's the course for you. It's going to have lots of templates that give you an idea of you know, exactly what you need to do. And then let's say you know everything except for branding, right? You know how to write, you know all the cases, but clients aren't coming in. Then the branding course is going to be for you, all the way from branding and marketing your practice. And then the last one is if you want to you know, revamp, you want to sharpen up the system that you currently have, or you're starting from fresh and you want to add this niche to your practice, to your group practice, then it's the all-inclusive course. It goes from the beginning all the way to the end. And then as I share with everyone, something in the courses that I do is I walk you through the entire process, all the way from documentation for the intake process. I give you templates for every single type of case so you know how to write the evaluations. And then I do a video walkthrough that goes over the template step by step so you know exactly why each section of the template is written in that manner. And then we go over type of cases. And then as a fun fact, the courses were created by, my, by Mei Juan and then by a local attorney, Alex, here in the Greensboro community. We kind of sat down um, in my office and then we did some videos so that all the clinicians out there are able to gain knowledge from the clinical side and from that legal side on how to effect, effectively do this type of work. So let's work together, let's do this. Um, all you have to do is click here to get started with the courses or visit uh, immigrationevaluationtraining.teachable.com. And as always, any questions that you have, let me know. I am so thankful to have, you know, have, have had this space with you to share it. I know that you've got so many things to do, so many places to go, but thank you for considering um, writing immigration evaluations and I will see you in, in the courses, all right? Uh, have an amazing day.